and thanks for joining us on this week's edition of The Eagle. We hope you'll stay tuned and enjoy the program. My name is Aisha Gambari. With me on the program is Aisha Mohammed. Hello. Hi, Aisha. Hello and welcome to the program. Chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, Ibrahim Lamorde, says the commission had secured more than 773 convictions and recovered billions of naira since its inception in 2003. In spite of the efforts of the EFCC, it is disturbing that many young people are still involved in internet scam. Our special focus today is a report on how the commission recently raided some locations in Lagos believed to be havens of internet scammers. Also this evening is an update on the Erastus Akimbola trial at the Lagos State High Court. This report and more comes your way shortly. <music> EFCC will get you anywhere, anytime. Justice Lowell Akapo of the Lagos High Court Ikeja will on May 2nd, 2014 rule on an application filed by a former managing director of Intercontinental Bank, now Access Bank PLC, Erastus Akimbola and his associate, Bayodada, challenging the jurisdiction of the court in a 22-count charge bordering on stealing and obtaining by false pretense, preferred against them by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. The ground for the application is the contention of the defendants that the State High Court lacked the jurisdiction to entertain the charge preferred against them. Counsels to Akimbola and Dada, Taiwo Oshipitan and Wale Olanipekum, both senior advocates, argued that only the Federal High Court is competent to handle the matter. They hinged their argument on an appeal court decision in the case of FRN v. Uwosu and therefore prayed the court to dismiss the case. EFCC's counsel Godwin Obla S.A.N., However, stress that whether one steals money from a bank or from an individual, the State High Court has jurisdiction. Justice Akapo adjourned the matter to May 2, 2014 for ruling on the consolidated applications. In another development, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has secured more than 773 convictions and recovered billions of naira since its inception in 2003. Chairman of the EFCC, Ibrahim Lamordi, stated this on Friday, April 11th, 2014, in Sokoto, while inaugurating the Usman Nafodi University chapter of Zero Tolerance Club, an anti-corruption club. Lamordi, who was represented by Osita Waja, Deputy Director, Public Affairs Directorate of the EFCC, explained that the war against corruption, economic and financial crimes would only be won through concerted efforts. The EFCC chairman, who expressed concern on the involvement of students in cybercrime, warned them to desist from using the internet to defraud innocent people, adding that on a daily basis, the commission arrests, detains, and prosecutes offenders in various cases of internet scams, and 65% of those arrested were undergraduates. In her address, Aisha Lare Musa, Head Enlightenment and Reorientation Unit of the Public Affairs Directorate of the EFCC, decried the high rate of criminal activities among students of tertiary institutions. The Vice-Chancellor of the University, Risku Oshehu, who was represented by his deputy, Abubakar Bagudu, urged Nigerians to collectively and frontally fight corruption. Cheers, cheers. <laughs> Oh, 
Chivuragwa. I got a telephone call. Chief, okay. Anytime I close my eyes, yes. I see dead people chasing me in my sleep. My Juva Magadam. Okay. Is it possible for someone to become restless just because of his past? Nevertheless, unless you kill somebody dead, then the spirit will be haunted you. Hey. Was you owe contractors? I embezzled all the money for the roads that are now death traps, killing people every day. I approved the supplies of fake drugs on pipe on water. I embezzled the money at the fear chief. You are supposed to fear the Afro, a special man that you don't know of EMCC. I chose to be here to rule to turn to other people money. EMCC, as soon as I capture them, threat to prison. Jail. 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 Ah! Are you there? Life are not just about acquire wealth. Making money. We know that people are getting die of hunger and neglect. Be careful. EFCC I watch. EFCC will get you anywhere, anytime. Glad to have you back. Next is our special focus segment. On the segment today, Aisha Gambaru was a Lagos to cover the special raid of suspected dens of internet scammers by operatives of the commission. The report. It's 4.30 a.m. on Sunday 6th April 2014. The EFCC operatives assembled all clad in the Commission's identifier red jackets. Their mission, to launch a raid on the suspected hideouts of internet scammers, popularly known as Yahoo Yahoo Boys. Abu Bakar Omide, a veteran of the fight against advanced fee fraud and leader of the team, briefed his men on the mission. We are going to cover all the exits. You don't leave your place. Remain where you remain and protect operatives that are inside, carry out the operation. In the past, the Commission usually carries out raids at various internet cafes where suspected activities of cybercrime perpetrators take place. In 2008, a massive operation tagged Operation Cyberstorm was launched, which took the Commission's operatives across the country. The operation led to the arrest of a large number of internet scammers who have been prosecuted Accordingly. The briefing was to guide the way to the final assault on the hideouts of the scammers. It entails information about the routes and details about the layout of the neighborhood where the targets are situated. Days earlier, operatives on surveillance mission had executed series of sorties to fish for information about the suspects and their hideouts. Intelligence from such civilians were vital in planning the final assault. Nothing should go wrong, the team leader warned the operatives. The attention to details mirrors the changing architecture of internet scam. Time was when all the commission needed to do was to pick up scammers by raiding any of the many cyber cafes that dots the nation's cities. But not anymore. Now, with the revolution in digital telephony and the easy access to internet, scammers now ply their trades from the comfort of their homes using some of the high-end smartphones and other gadgets. These make spotting targets and hitting at such targets not only a killing, but a task that must be executed with the precision of a brain surgeon. With all the eyes dotted and the T's crossed, the team headed for the targets two locations in upscale Lekki Peninsula axis of Lagos State. One of the targets is a five-bedroom duplex within the Lekki County homes. The building, which was said to belong to one S.A. Iriruagba, a 26-year-old student of Delta State University, was stormed by the operatives at exactly 5 a.m. Many of the suspected scammers, who are mostly undergraduates in their 20s, were still asleep when the EFCC came calling. The noise of the strange human activities woke most of them up. 
For the suspects, the sudden intrusion into their world was like a scene from a horror movie. They were caught off guard. They never expected the raid, not to talk of one at the break of dawn. Like frightened squirrels fleeing from the dangerous predator, they scampered in different directions, but none escaped the griefs of the operatives who had to rely on touch lights from their mobile phones for visibility. In less than five minutes, they were all fished out from various rooms within the building and assembled with their faces to the floor in their night boxes. The search and arrest warrants were read to them. None of them protested or pleaded innocence of involvement in scams. They all sat on the floor, some with deviant looks, while others had fear written all over as the operatives combed the apartment for suspected devices used in perpetrating the crime. The operations lasted two hours. From my watch is 7 a.m. in the morning. Like I told you earlier, we got here 5 o'clock this morning. We got a tip that some boys are here and they are largely involved in internet scamming. So we really don't know yet. When investigations are conducted, we'll get to the root of it. But for now, we were able to get about nine of them and we found exhibits with them, different laptops, modems. And you know, in the past, the commission usually goes into cyber cafes to arrest this boys. But because people now can afford internet in their homes, at their convenience, nobody really goes to internet cafes anymore. So we changed tactics. One of those things we do is we try to lay surveillance on them. And when we lay surveillance on them and we get information, we bust the apartment. The commission usually raids cyber cafes in the past. Why the change in tactics? Yes. Actually, what Warren is that uh, the ISP provider now, they have mobile net uh, ISP they provide for them. It's mobile. You can buy your laptop, click it in your house, then any message you want to send, you send. That's why everybody purchases their own uh, uh, facility to operate. So now they don't go to Sabakato. They operate it anywhere in their room. That's why we do not go to Sawa Cafe again. There are no more going there. The moment they have a little money, they purchase their laptop and get the device, they connect it to their laptop anywhere they can print. How do you identify the perpetrators of this crime so that the innocent citizens with their legitimate incomes are not arrested? Now for our, our operative, we monitor these young boys, undergraduate children with flash cards. We actually take them mostly on what they, they are into. One, by the modules of the car they use. Okay. What's what they realize from their, from their victims, they use it to possess car. Okay. And also use a very nice building where they can rent, pay like two years, a million plus. Okay. I think you see this place now. Okay. Somebody who has nothing to offer. It is not working because the money realized from the from scammer, then they acquire the building. They rent the building, paying millions. In this area now, you see, you can, it gets not even the up to two million for a year. So this is the problem Nigeria is facing now. Seven of the alleged internet scammers were arrested. They include Anthony Onos, Shola Muiwa, Kome Emmanuel. Ese Iruaga, Stephen Omene, Eleti Debi, and Jimmy Cousin. Upon assessing their laptops, various email scams sent to their victims were discovered. The various false identities used by the suspected scammers to deceive their victims were also found. One of the suspects, Shola Muiwa, confessed to the crime. Muiwa said his friend, who was also arrested by the commission, introduced him to love scam a few months ago. Where did you me. get this picture from? Mm, someone gave it to me. Do you know the person in the picture? No. Have you ever seen him? No. no. Do you know his name? No. Thank you. What did you say? The male picture. I got it for the scam with the online dating. Muiwa admitted to chatting with five people via the dating site, but that only one of them agreed to send the money, which he cashed using a friend's identification.
Yeah. Hunt, has she made any payments to you? Yeah, last week. About last two week. Ago. How much? Hundred dollars. Have you collected it? The money, yes. Yes. How did she send it to you? How did you collect it? Which identity did you use? Um, actually, I set the trade first name. Mm -hmm. I, my, I don't have ID card. My ID card is um, expired. So it was actually a friend of the Muyiwa said he made his victim believe that he was an American, but presently working as a civil engineer in Nigeria. I came to um, Nigeria for a job. Along the line, I encountered them um, little problems. So I thought that I just needed little money for accommodation and the rest. So she decided to help me. She sent $100 to me. So how did you collect the money? When she asked me that, how I told her I didn't have ID card. My ID card, my um, international passport I use in traveling. That I, I got and just told me, so I have to try to recover everything back. So I told her I don't have any, but unless the driver, the driver that takes, that takes me around. So she sent the money to the driver's name. What's the driver's name? What's the name of the person they sent the money to? Items recovered from the suspects include cars, a Range Rover Sports, an Acura ZDS, a Honda Cross Tour, also recovered are iPhones, Blackberry smartphones, nine SIM cards, internet modems, hard drives, checkbooks, international passports, and credit cards. The suspects will be charged to court as soon as investigations are concluded. Meanwhile, the Nine Network crew and Australian-based television network witnessed the raid. The crew were in Nigeria on a special assignment featuring the activities of the commission, especially as it relates to combating confidence crimes. But their concern was the Jesse Omoko case. Omoko was arrested in 2013 by the EFCC after the commission received complaints from the West Australian police. He was said to have allegedly defrauded an Australian national the sum of $90 million through love scam. The team were received at the EFCC Lagos office by a team of the commission staff led by Wilson Uwujaren, head media and publicity. The visit started with an exhibition of some items recovered by the commission from Frosters. These items include counterfeit check leaves, bankers' checks, travelers' checks, laptops, fake United States of America dollars, credit cards, debit cards, mobile phones, wristwatches, and SIM cards from various telecommunication service providers. Abdul Karim Chukol, head Advanced Fee Fraud, explained how those fraudulent instruments were discovered. As you can see from this right side of the table, these are fake uh, checks, some of them uh, orders, monogram orders, uh, this is like Walmart, and these are fake checks. Actually, they have been targeted uh, to most of these uh, organizations because these are counterfeits. And is this a good counterfeit? No. Well, uh, looking at the level of counterfeiting, this one should go for like grade two. There is a grade one that is quite. Uh, if you look at it, it looks more of the original. Mm -hmm. But this one looks like the original, but if you touch it, it doesn't look original at all. True. Yes. And we have several of them here. These are some of them that were counterfeits, and they are cashier checks, and they are counterfeits. And these are used in furtherance of, of the scams they used. Mm -hmm. These are some of the instruments that we recovered from a suspect who has different identities. As you can see, we have over 15 Mm. SIM cards that he has been using. So depending on the victim that he is dealing with, yes. so each victim has his own different number, so they can now communicate. And uh, if the victim calls, he knows the victims that called on that particular number, and going by the number he has given to the victims. Uh, so one person had all of these phones? One person has all these phones, one person has all these identity cards, one mm. person has all these SIM cards. And when he was arrested, he was arrested with even fake United States American dollars. Yes. That looks like a good fake too. Yes, this is a good fake. Mm. This is actually a good fake. Uh, they must have printed it from a high level machine uh, that is being used for the production. Mm. These are other cards that were recovered from a suspect who had about 106 of these payment cards. What they do is the phishing attacks that they used 
when they get information of people, they embed it on these cards, and they can now use to remove money from people's accounts. So one person was arrested with 106. Presently, the guy is in custody, and he's going to be charged to call very soon. So what kind of person was Omoko? No, Omoko is more of, uh, he was arrested based on the romance scams that he was running. Mm. Uh, and the investigation is still ongoing to find out which other kind of schemes he is into presently. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Chuko explained how the counterfeit dollars on display were also recovered. These are all fake dollars. Mm. Normally it starts with a different scheme, then it graduates into this kind of scheme. In some situations, once they start talking to the victim with uh, a different kind of scam, then it got to a point where I would say that I have a huge amount of money sitting somewhere, but probably the money is being marked, mm -hmm. or I need money so that I can buy the chemicals to wash it. Uh, in some situations, they will show them this amount of money, and uh, they will tell them that if you give a particular amount of money, then I'm going to, you're going to get a certain percentage if at the end we're able to clean it. And so people fall for that? People do actually fall for that. Uh, we've seen Australians have been flown from Australia to South Africa to be shown this kind of thing and they really, really fall for it. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, there's a woman I remembered in Queensland who fell for something like that. And uh, I mean, she lost millions of dollars. Wow. Yes. It's a lot of money. Stephen Bolin, one of the visiting journalists who is also the producer of 60 Minutes, a program produced by the Nine Network and other members of his team, said they were highly impressed with the coordination and expertise displayed by the EFCC operatives in carrying out their duties. You know, we work with a lot of law enforcement agencies in Australia, uh, in the US, and, and you know, we've done stories in Brazil, many countries as well. And I have to say, the EFCC has been up there in terms of professionalism uh, and openness with us, which is, which is so good. I think whenever we're doing a story like this, it is a collaboration, and I think there needs to be an element of trust between both parties as well. And I think we certainly found that here in Nigeria. Now that I'm here, I've been quite surprised by how active the EFCC is and how seriously you take these crimes and how you are sending a message that Nigeria is no longer open if you're a scammer then you're not wanted here we will track you down and so I guess I was surprised by just how much work you're doing um, to combat this particular crime. Wow Aisha that was a big one. Kudos to all of you that participated in that read. I must commend you guys. Yeah, it was a big one, Aisha. It was really a big one. You need to see, you know, it was really, really alarming to see the number of young people that should be doing something productive for exactly. themselves, exactly. getting involved in internet scams. It's heartbreaking. It's really heartbreaking, you know. It's the whole um, report actually looked like a movie or something. Exactly, like a movie. Because, you know, it actually looked like the movie to them too. Because when we got into the house, they were sleeping. Some of them were like... Is this for real, you know, mm. kind of, you know? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, this should sound as a warning to young people out there who are still involved in this unwholesome trade called internet scam. They must give up the business or face the risk of going to jail. Do not say you are not warned. Well, you have a choice to turn a new leaf or find yourself in jail. The choice is yours. Next is our feedback segment with Chidi Ma. Amanambo. Husseini Uma wrote us via Facebook saying the level of embezzlement taking place in our foreign missions is uncalled for. The money is from Nigerian taxpayers. It is therefore not outside EFCC jurisdiction. You need to check that because some missions are left empty by ambassadors or finance attaches to the level of embarrassment that they can't even pay rent, utilities, etc. EFCC, please check that. Thank you, Hussein, for the information. The Commission will look into your allegations. However, if you have specific instances, don't hesitate to get back to us. Another follower on our Twitter handle, OJ Max, tweeted at official EFCC saying, Dear God, please open the eyes of the EFCC to the gross misconduct on the illegalities in the telecommunication industry. Thanks, OJ Max. We have heard your cry. We are very happy for your contribution. But please, if you have any information on any misconduct in that sector, 
We would be glad if you oblige us with such information. Thanks for staying tuned. We hope you keep the meals coming. On that note, we end today's edition of The Eagle. I am Aisha Agamberi saying thanks for watching. God bless Nigeria. Aisha? Yes, Aisha. The Public Interface Unit of the Public Affairs Department of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, is driving a national discourse online every week. Our focus is good governance as it affects the anti-corruption crusade in Nigeria. Please join us on Google Plus by searching for official EFCC or official EFCC NG at gmail.com. When signed in your Google Plus account, follow us or like us. You can also join us on official EFCC forward slash facebook.com or follow us on Twitter at official EFCC. You can also watch our programs on official EFCC forward slash youtube.com. Thanks for being there. Bye-bye.